So guys, it's wonderful to have you on the call. And what I want to talk to you about today is the power of consistency. Why it's so incredibly important to be consistent in everything you do. Perfect example, this week Wednesday, I deliver my 52nd Facebook Live, my 15 minutes of food segments. That's one year's worth of content. And if you can try them in live, great. If you can't, leave a comment on that video from this week Wednesday to be in for the draw because there will be a competition draw. Um, the community manager will announce uh, in the Ontrelation Facebook group that there's something, uh, there's going to be some kind of gift, some, some, some prize, prize draw. So comment on this week Wednesday's 15 minutes of food in the Ontrelation Facebook group, my segment, and there will be a live, uh, uh, there will be a prize that will be revealed by the following week. I talk about this because consistency in everything you do is incredibly important. <laughs> consistency is incredibly important in everything you do. What consistency actually allows you to do is take, take control of your life. And when we understand that how to implement consistency in everything we do, all of a sudden, life starts to change. Let me give you a prime example. When I first started to deliver my Facebook Lives, I used to really have to think about, my gosh, what am I going to talk about today? I know it's only 15 minutes, and man, oh man, you can chat for hours, but you need to make sure you've got 15 minutes of valuable content. What are you going to speak about? And I used to really have to think and plan it out. Now, I get inspired by some life event something that's happened and it can be something that comes to me that morning and bam give me five minutes and i'll break down the idea i'll chop it up i'll have a few bullet points and i'll put it together my point is quite simply when you've executed with a level of consistency week after week after week and as i said i'm delivering my 52nd facebook live in the entrepreneurship facebook group this week when you deliver consistently every single week, week in, week out, and you know that you need to wrap up something that gives a level of value to your students, you'll pluck something from a life event, you'll break it down, you'll understand that within this, there will be a story, within this, there will be something that is going to give me a level of understanding as to what I need to do and how I can make this valuable for others, what then happens is it starts to flow. It starts to become easy. Content creation seems to be something that you no longer worry about. You no longer sweat over. Flint, can you possibly just drop the reminder with the correct link to Mark and uh, to Eric and to a number of people that you've already sent out to? I know you've already done this, Flint but everyone was jumping on the other link. And I know there's probably seven or eight people that still haven't managed to get on this. Flint, if you can do that for me, that'd be incredible. Thank you. So getting back to consistency, that's, that's another thing. I have got an incredible assistant who's incredibly consistent. Everywhere you look in life, if you can pull consistency, that will transform. And one of the stories I want to talk to you about today that takes consistency to another level is about the fact that when you implement consistency at an extremely professional level, it can literally change your life. Those of you that know me well, those of you that have been on my uh, boot camp where I've delivered a story about one of my sons being. Uh, a fairly decent amateur boxer at some point. I'm going to help you understand the story. When my son was eight years old, both of them, I said to them, okay, so they'd finished playing football. I said, what's your next sport that you really want to get into? What is it you want to do? Put some thought behind it and 
I'll go and do some research and I'll find something to take to. And they both said boxing. I said, great, fantastic. So I went on a hunt, did some research, found a local boxing gym, came quite highly recommended. So I took my boys to the boxing gym. Now, unfortunately, one of my boys has got a fiery temper. <laughs> and even at eight years old, it was presenting itself. And you can't be an angry boxer. That won't lead to a good outcome. My other son was very calm, collected, and took great instruction, was very courageous, brave. And whatever he put his mind to, he would implement. He started to become a very accomplished young boxer. And I've told the story about before every boxing bout, he would physically be sick. And I used to pull him aside and say, son, when we went running on the sidewalk, pavement, wherever you want to call it, we've put in the miles, you've done the work already. When you're in the gym on the heavy bag, on the speed ball, sparring, you've put in the work, you've been consistent, you've done what's necessary today. Today, I need you to step up with a level of courage because when you stand in front of your opponent, you cannot show any fear. You show an ounce of fear you've lost. What you have to do is be courageous and understand that you've already done the work. You can do this. You've got this. And you can step up. And in the first 10, 15 seconds, he might have a little bit of nervous energy, but then he would really hit it and move into a different gear. And he performed consistently. But in the gym, there was another young boy from Africa, uh, I think he was from Ghana. And I used to see him coming into the gym and he was a couple of years older than my son. And again, he was really focused, would work incredibly hard in the gym, took great instructions from the coaches. And I got talking to this young guy, young guy called Josh. And I said, Josh, I always noticed you come training by yourself. got no friends that are around you or no family members and he, he explained to me my mum and my dad are traditional Ghanaian parents and they think this whole boxing nonsense as they call it is a fad something that I'm just doing they want me to study so I am really going to be working hard on my studies and I'm going to go to university because that's what they want and I'm going to complete my degree in psychology. I already know where I'm going. But this boxing thing, this boxing thing has got me out of trouble because I was starting to hang around with the wrong crowd and get myself into trouble. I said, okay, okay. He said, so that's why I come to boxing each week because it's given me a level of discipline. And Josh remained incredibly consistent. He'd come training every week. And you could see the steady progression. And I'd ask him, how are things going for studies? And yeah, things are going really well. My parents are still conflicted. They still think I'm completely and utterly wasting my time. But I'm focused on this because it's really keeping my head in the right space. So as time went on, I saw Josh improving. I saw my son improving. And they'd go to some of the same competitions because we were all fighting as one boxing club. And I just saw Josh's progression. And you know, sometimes you see a spark in someone and you think, he's got something about him. I can see him going a long way. Anyway, the reason why I tell this story in terms of the power of consistency is that Josh continued and my son got to, he was about 16. And he said, Dad, I, I don't know if I want to do this box and stuff anymore. And I said, you're doing incredibly well, son. You could take this quite far. Yeah, I know, Dad, but uh, I don't really, I'm not enjoying it the way I used to. And I've always said to my children, if you're doing something and at any point you stop enjoying it, I will never force you to do something. You have to love what you're doing on some level. I'm never going to force you to do something that you don't love. So anyway, my son decided that he didn't want to go boxing anymore. 
And because I got on really well with the trainer, I kept in touch with the trainer. And I'd ask him, how's Josh getting on? Josh is doing pretty well. Josh then went through to the ABA's Amateur Boxing Association National Championships. And he became the English champion. And I was like, Josh is doing pretty good. Josh has really got his head in the right space. Josh is staying focused. Um, and I went to a competition and met up with some of the old boys from the boxing club. And Josh was there and I had a good old chat with Josh. And how are things going, Josh? Things are going incredible. At this point, Josh was about 18, so he's at university. And he said, um, I'm finding it hard training as much because I've got to make sure I get on with my studies because my parents have actually said, the only way I can continue boxing is if my grades don't slip at university. And I'm committed to this boxing thing. I, I, I think I've got what it takes to go to the next level. But I have to make sure I continue with my studies, otherwise my parents are going to rule over me. So he found he was combining the work with studies as well as going boxing. I then heard that Josh had been selected for the national team for England to go to the Olympics. And I was like, oh my gosh, I knew this kid had something. I knew he was special. The Olympics came around and I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was 2020 or 2016, the London Olympics. I think it was 2016. Yeah, I'm pretty certain. Pretty certain. The dates might have been, but I think it was 2016, the London Olympics. And I tune in, and lo and behold, I see Josh on TV. I see Josh on my on my screen in front of me. So I call my son. Son, look, who's that? My gosh, it's Josh. We were in the same gym together. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, my son had got to. I think it was 18 or 19. And do you know what he said to me? He said, Dad, I wish I carried on with boxing. I said, you know what, son? That's that old thing. I was never going to force you to do what you didn't enjoy. I did talk to you and help you understand that you're special. You've got something about you. You could have taken this further. But I, as I said, I'm never going to force you to do something that you don't want to do. Now, I'm your dad and I've got more life experience and more knowledge than you have. But just because I'm older and I believe I'm wiser, it doesn't mean that I always know best. And it's your life. And I'm not going to force you to do something you don't want to do. However, the power of consistency is something that you must instill in your life moving forward. You've got to be consistent because that's the only way you become great. There are lots of people that are good at things. But if you're just good, you're going to be one of the mill. You're going to be in that mix where there are lots of people in your level. When you step up and you become great, it's a lot less crowded at the top. But you have to be consistent. Take that as a life lesson, sir. Take that as a lesson that you have to apply consistency to everything you do. But anyway, let's enjoy watching Josh because Josh has come a long way. And Josh went through round after round, scoring knockout after knockout and starting to become a bit of a British sensation. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is this young guy. And if you guys have got any interest in boxing, his name is Joshua Boazzi, a light heavyweight. Anyway, with his training and with his consistency, Josh came out of the Olympics with a bronze medal. Personally, I believe he should have got in the finals and won gold, but hey, maybe I'm just biased. But he came out for a bronze medal. And he started to get courted by some of the most incredible names in boxing to be signed. In actual fact, I'm not sure if you guys have heard the name Floyd Mayweather, but he actually met Floyd at the Olympics because Floyd wanted to sign him. Anyway, he thought about it and he, he, he didn't want to be signed by Floyd. There, there was just something that, that he didn't take to. He then got signed by a gentleman called Eddie Hearn, 
match room boxing and he's a huge English promoter. So Josh went from this young kid who was in the gym because he wanted to stay out of trouble because he was going down the wrong path. But he was taking great instruction and he had something about him and he was prepared to apply consistency. And he went from being a budding young boxer to a national champion to a bronze medalist in the Olympics to then become a professional boxer signed by one of the biggest promoters in the UK. Oh, and by the way, he got a, a 2-1 in his psychology degree. So, yeah, his parents were also very happy. And then they saw, maybe my son wasn't just playing at this boxing thing because not only did he fulfil on his promise to us and complete his degree, but he's also now a professional boxer. And the reason why I tell you the story about Josh is because Josh recently won a fight that has put him in line for probably his next fight will be a world title fight at light heavyweight. And this is a young man who my son boxed alongside him. They were different weights and he was like the older, but my son boxed alongside him in the gym. I know Josh. I see him, I can shake his hand and give him a hug. I saw him when he was 16-year-old, just starting out. He's now about to be a world title contender. His life has already changed immeasurably because when you get to a high level in professional sports, yeah, the dollar signs or the pound signs, whatever currency you want to look at it, they start to follow you. But as you guys know, in business, money is a lagging indicator. It's the same as sports. You've got to put in that time, that effort, and that consistency in order to get there. But my point is quite simple. He's now about to become a professional heavyweight or a light heavyweight title contender. And this is because he was prepared to put in the work, the effort, and the consistency. Now, has it been easy? Absolutely not. He would definitely tell you he's had some challenges along the way. I know it's certainly not been easy. Has it been simple? Well, yeah, absolutely. Because all he really had to do was keep training, keep applying himself, and take one fight at a time. Why does this have a level of alignment with yourselves? Because as an entrepreneur, you're going to have challenges. You're going to have battles. You're going to have fights you need to win. Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. But is it simple? Yeah, really, very simple. You just have to remain focused and apply a level of consistency. That's what's going to be your ultimate world title fight. The level of consistency you apply. Now, the one thing I really want to help you understand is as well as consistency, don't ever let anyone else's limited view of the world become your vision. His parents told Josh that he was just playing at this boxing thing. This was just a fad. This was just something that was going to be a phase. He was going to put it down. But Josh didn't allow his parents as much as he loves his mom and dad, they're traditional Ghanaian parents and they didn't think that boxing was something you could take seriously. They, as far as they were concerned, Josh had to go and get a good education and then get a good job and then ultimately work 40 hours a week for 40 years and hope and pray that there was enough in his retirement. Does this sound familiar, guys? <laughs> But Josh had his own mind. Josh had his own vision, his own thoughts, his own outcome. And Josh's outcome was, I'm not going to let my dream be dictated or governed by anybody else at any time. I truly am going to understand that my journey 
is my journey. I'm not going to allow anyone else's limitations to, at any point, uh, cloudy my vision, take me off of my path, muddy my water. No, that's their view of the world. That's their model of the world. My model of the world is that I have a dream, I have an aspiration, I have an outcome that I am going to achieve. Why? Because I'm focused. I'm clear about what I want. I'm going to apply a level of consistency and I'm eagerly going to do the hard things well. Yeah, I know this all sounds a bit familiar, right, guys? Because there are parallels. There are parallels with exactly what you're doing. There are going to be people that are going to want to rain on your parade. There are going to be people that are going to want to apply their limited thinking and overlay that on your journey. <laughs> Bless you, sir. Excuse me. <laughs> no, no, probably do this. There are going to be people that are going to want to challenge your thought process. And for whatever reason, their own limited view of the world, by the way, make you believe that what you're doing, that's not the best path for you. That's not what's going to allow you to achieve what you want to achieve. When in actuality, that's their view of the world. That's their model of the world. That's what they're thinking. That's not your dream. You've already mapped out your plan in your mind as to what your dream is. And if anything I've said to you has sunk, I hope you've got more of a map in your mind. I hope you've also got a dreamscape that you've written out in detail and a vision board that is somewhere in your locality that you can look at and have as a visual representation for your outcome. And then you just apply a level of consistency. You ensure that their limited view doesn't overlay on your dream and you keep moving one step at a time. Now, Josh's journey has probably been, my gosh, maybe 10 years. I'm sure he's probably in his mid-20s now. His journey's probably been 10 years to go from a young kid in a boxing gym to now being a world title contender, living financially abundantly, traveling the world because I see him on screen at a lot of the big fights because boxers follow other boxers. I see him on screen having interviews after he's won big fights because that's what he does now. He travels the world as a professional boxer. But his dream is unfolding in front of him. I like in everything, there's only room at the top for a few. There are lots of professional boxers, but they don't all make it to the point where they're on the brink of being a world title holder. In the same vein, there are lots of entrepreneurs and they don't all make it to becoming financially free. So what's the difference between those that make it and those that don't? About that much. And when I say about that much, that much is the difference between good and great. And the way you make yourself go from good to great is with a level of consistency, a level of belief, a level of determination, a level of conviction, and passion wrapped up all with a nice little bow on top. But ensuring that you at no time put down your aspiration, your dream, your vision, your outcome. And you do not allow anyone else's limited view of the world to hinder yours. Because 
before I conclude, I want to help you understand what happens in many cases. People will mock you. People will criticize you. Then people will pay attention to you. Then people will admire you. Then people will ask advice from you. And that journey, you've gone from being no one to being someone who's putting in a bit of work and starting to make some moves to someone who's actually starting to make a mark to someone who's achieving some success to someone who's shining. And let's just put it like this. As we call in the UK, you probably hear the saying in the US as well, your haters, the ones who don't think you're going to become anything, will in many cases become your biggest fan when you shine and you break the surface at the top. So in conclusion, what I want you to understand is the power of consistency will take you to where you want to be. But consistency alone isn't going to get you there. It's your belief, your passion, your conviction, and your determination. All of these attributes together will allow you to achieve a level of greatness that you probably can't even imagine. But it's possible as long as you believe. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this call that this week, Wednesday, when I delivered my 15 minutes of food, nourishment for mind, my Facebook Live, this week, Wednesday, will be my 52nd 15 minutes of food segment. One year's worth of content. The community team will be making an announcement in the Entre Nation Facebook group, and there will be a giveaway of some sorts. If you could join my call live on Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the Entre Nation Facebook group, that'd be incredible. I'd love to have you on the call. If you can't join it live, go on to that video once it's published, and it will be published by about 9.20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go on to that video, put a comment in the chat box of what has been your greatest takeaway from any of my videos, and that will enter you into the prize draw, which will be announced. The winner will be announced before next week, Wednesday's Facebook Live. So on that note, understand that consistency is key. Belief is imperative. And a burning passion to achieve your outcome is what will keep you going. All can and will be achieved one step at a time. I'm committed to delivering as much value as possible in each and every single interaction we have. I'm so committed that I want you to understand Monday's my birthday and this is my birthday weekend and I'm still here celebrating with you guys. So on that note, please understand all can and will be achieved one step at a time. The question I will leave you all with until our next encounter is quite simple. And I know you guys know the question already. How committed are you to yourselves? On that note, have the most incredible, incredible weekend. I look forward to sharing some time with you all in the near future. And if you can be live with me on Wednesday, your, your, your presence will be appreciated. If not, drop a comment on the video. And I'm sure I'll see you again next week Saturday. Uh, I would say next week Saturday, but I'm on a birthday marathon. Next week, apparently, my partner's taken me away. I don't know where, but she told me that Friday, no work for you Friday. But where are we going? Yeah, just make sure you're not working on Friday. We've got a weekend away. We've got a weekend planned. So, guys, I'm not going to be here next Saturday, unfortunately, but I'll be here on the following Saturday. You know there can never be two weeks, and I don't see you. Why? The power of consistency, of course. <laughs> on that note, guys, have the most incredible weekend, and I'll see you in two weeks' time. Happy Take birthday. Care. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you, sir. Appreciate you all. Appreciate you all so Happy much. Happy birthday. God bless weekend. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have an incredible weekend, guys. Take Kevin, care. Today, today is my birthday, Kevin. Happy birthday. 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 <laughs> it really is. Oh, uh, hold on. Wait a minute. Who said it's their birthday? Richard? Uh, Rick did, yeah. And well, I, am, well, 
I am consistently practicing preparation. I wanted to let you know that. Uh, Rick, hold on. When's your birthday? Today, June 18th. Oh, my friend. I'm, I'm the big 7-0. 7-0. Oh, I can't My friend, fantastic. Fantastic. Happy birthday, Rick. Thank you for sharing some time. And 70 years on this planet is a great achievement, my friend. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. I'll tell you, if, if you're a biblical man, I'm pretty certain. Did the Lord not say three score and ten and everything above that is a bonus? That's right. That's right. I, got, I got two more. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Enjoy your day. And I'm glad we share birthdays so close to each other, Rick. I, mean, I know. There's a reason great. I really like you. And my, my wife is taking me to see the Top Gun on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, enjoy, my friend. Enjoy. Have an incredible birthday weekend, Rick. Thank you. Each and every one of you, have a great day, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks' time, okay? Happy birthday, Kevin. Bye. Happy Thank birthday. you, guys. Happy Appreciate it, guys. Bye-bye. Take care, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye. Cheers. Happy birthday.